Well, thank you so much and welcome back to this live coverage chemistry paper three out of the three papers we tackle in this subject, the, the chemistry. I'm um, take you through the paper three and then um, the paper three, it is a paper which we handle the practical parts. Practical. And for the practical of the chemistry, as you can see, what I have on these other sections of Agama schools in the studio for the uh, practicals, we are actually the titration. And remember, we have different types of practicals usually under, under the chemistry, that is the test, uh, test of cations, test of anions, uh, quantitative analysis, the titration, remember we have different types of titrations, we have the direct titration, we have the back titration, and then we have the radox titration. What I'm about to do here, students, is what we call the radox titration. That's what I'm going to take you through. Just to emphasize more on this paper three, remember it is a paper which is out of 40. Uh, students, remember in chemist paper 3, uh, the general paper, we have paper 1, which is out of 80, we have paper 2, which is marked out of 80. Remember, this is a theory as well, paper 2 is a theory, then this is a practical part. What we do to calculate 100 percentage is that we usually add paper 1 and the paper 2, then we quit to 60 percent. What I would say, we take paper 1, add to pepper 2, alright? So what you get there out of the summation of this, pepper 1 plus pepper 2, then you get to 60%. So it to mean then the practical part, which is out of 40, we usually calculate it directly the way it is. So it's a very crucial paper, and that's what I'm about to take you through, students. As you can see what I have here, <coughs> we have, uh, uh, you are provided with the following. We have solution Q, Solution Q, you are told it is 0 0.5 molars, that is sulfuric acid solutions. And that's exactly what I have here. This solution Q, I have, right? That is the acid, can uh, a bit similar, that's the acid, uh, sulfuric acid. Uh, my cameraman, if you can zoom what I have on board, we have solution P, and solution P is sodium hydroxide, which is a base, and the sodium hydroxide, I have it here in this conco flask. So we have it there. Remember this, so we just put in the laboratory. We have the uh, crystals of the sodium hydroxide here, and we have the acid. Whatever we have prepared now is 0.5 uh, molar. Again, you have some other things you are provided. We have the phenolphthalein indicator. The phenolphthalein indicator, we have it here. You can do it very nicely. It's uh, an indicator. Let me explain something so far up to that point. That, um, the purpose of the indicator is to, to show the end point when the neutralization is attained. What are we talking about? We are going to do the titration. Titration is the neutralization of the acid and the base. In the pH, the pH, above we have the 7 which is neutral, this one extends up to 14, and this is the base part, and this one from 1, this is the acid part. Right? So this is the pH scale. Right? That is 8, 9, go all the way up to 14, is 1 up to that point. So we say from 1 to 6.9, any solution which shows or precipitates that pH numbers, then we say it is, a, is an acid. Any solution which precipitates numbers which is from number 7 to 14, we say it is, it is a base. So basically what we are doing here students, we are going to get the acid, acid, then we neutralize with the base with the base till we get a solution which is neutral. All right, we have the base, we have the acid, uh, we have the acid, we have the base. We have to add them or neutralize them till we get a solution which has no, which has the pH seven, which is neutral. So it will mean that when you test with the any indicator, it will not precipitate the characteristics of the basicity. Uh, nor the acidity. So the purpose of the indicator which we shown here, uh, my viewers, this one shows the end point when the neutral point has been attained. That's what we mean. So we have some other things we are provided with. We are not included on the board. We have the clamp, a stand and a clamp. This one we call um, the burette. Then we have some conco flask there. Is a conco flask, you can have them there. You have some other apparatus. 
this we call it a pipette right we have the wash bottles we have some beakers with us here we are going to to add some solutions and um, I think that's so so we can get to the procedure and do a practical uh, and solve some questions there so this is a procedure <coughs> so the note you are required to standardize solution Q which was the acid with solution P which was the base so uh, which, which was provided right now procedure number one fill the burette with solution Q up to zero marks so this is the burette this is the burette so we have been told we fill with solution Q the solution Q uh, have it here in this beaker here in solution Q we say it was the acid so we are going to fill this one uh, and turn this one so that you viewers or my students you can be able to see the marks so my cameraman you're going to show them the, the number the way they are there so we are going to fill this solution here uh, just be carefully till it fills uh, up to zero mark so what we are going now But this is an acid, so it is diluted. So, okay, right. You can adjust that one. To zero mark. Right. Right. So you show them clearly. To see that's what we have filled the burette with the acid this one here up to zero mark that's procedure number one right uh procedure number two you find left 25 centimeter of solution p into a dry cotton flask so i have my cotton flask here right um supposed to pipette Show them the mark. Let's go slowly. All right. Uh, there we go. Out to zero mark. All right. There we go. All right. Boom. We have it. So that's 25 cubic centimeter of solution P, which was the sodium hydroxide. Then we're going to add to this dry conical flask. The solution we have it there. Perfect. So what we're going to do next, after now we have the solution which is the basic solution P as well we have solution Q which is the sulfuric acid. We need to neutralize these two solutions till we get a solution which is neutral, right? A solution which has no effect on any litmus paper, either red litmus paper or blue litmus paper. In that case we use now the solution of indicator which is the venophalin indicator. So students, what I have here Base sodium hydroxide exactly 25 cubic centimeter. This will go to, uh, is, about, is what I'm about to neutralize with the acid which I uh, we had it here, which is exactly 25 cubic centimeter. Right. So process number three. Um, after now we fill the burette to zero mark and we prepare 25 cubic centimeter into a dry, uh, dry conical flask. You add two to three drops of the indicator to solution P and we titrate against the solutions. So, right here, indicator, turn off on. Remember, we have different types of indicators, remember, students. We have the methyl orange indicator, there are some. Well, so I have to get my dropper right here. Then I'm going to suck that over my suckling here. So I have it here. This is a indicator. So you can come with me on this. So I'm going to add two to three drops, right? Uh, so clearly I can do this one here so that you can, can show the real thing to students. So we're going to add this one. Let's see what happens. We have one drop. There's some change of the color made was colorless at the beginning. We have other drops. So we can add this. 
the tops that we shake. So we have a pink color to be from the right. So that's what we have. So this is our base with the indicator. So we have to neutralize this one. Not to treat against the solution we have in the bed till we get a solution which is neutral. This one, the indicator we have added here, this solution here, it will help us to see the end point when the neutralization point has been reached. So what are we going to do? We are going to titrate. So there we go. Right. Now my solution there. We can come closer so that we can show the students. So what we are going to do, we are going to nitrate here. Then when the end point is arrived, then we are going to read the marks on the burette. Then we are going to fill the table because after we do the practical, we are supposed now we record your results in the, this table here. So this table we need to do the practical part. This we are what about to fill. The values we are going to fill there, we are going to obtain them there. Right? So come closer. <coughs> Let's do this. So, there we go. As I shake, it'll be clear. All right. So, oh, boom, it has happened. All right? So, the pink color has disappeared. So, what we do now. Um, we come back to our period here, then we read the values. Remember, we had filled up to the zero mark. If you remember very well, we had filled up the zero mark. Now it has gone up to what? We can read together. Um, we have zero, we have one, we have two, we have three, we have four, we have five point. This is six. Uh, we have to read it correctly. That is six point what? Exactly six point one. So we can record here. So come here with me. So we have the final burette reading. We have the initial burette reading. For the first attempt, it was 0.00. .00. Now we have found to be 0, 6 point, 6 point 1. 6 point 1. So what we're supposed to do, we are supposed to redo this practical again, or that bit again. So there we go. We pull off that one. Then we rinse now the conical flask again, this way. But point off. So what we do? Um, well, um, <clears throat> so the first thing now, let's now fit this one again up to zero mark. So let's do it. Mark so that one step one. Remember, we have trial one, we have trial two, we have trial three. Let's do the first two. Then the next thing we're going to do, we have our dry concrete flask, we have our base, let's pipe it 25 cubic centimeter. Let's do this. Right, there we go. Perfect. So we have to adjust this solution, the base to be at zero mark, to adjust to be 25 because that's what you are supposed to pipette. So there we go. Right. I'm going to release some air about this. Oh my, it has gone down. So that one is a, uh, a zip tab. Fantastic, exactly. So 25 cubic centimeters students, uh, your 
I painted that. So we have it right there. Right, so we have it right there. So step number two, we add two to three drops of the Nopaline indicator. Our indicator is here. You can see it very well. And we are going to add that to the dropper. I have some here. So we have some drops there. That's all. Perfect. The solution which has been formed today is pink in color. Right? So this is what we are going to titrate again this solution which is at zero. So let's do it. So you can come closer so that we can show them what we exactly are doing. So let's do it. Shake till you get the end point. Do it when you're shaking. Right. Exactly. Just changed. So you can show them. Let's get up here. Show them here. Just take the card. Right. So, um, when you read the values, uh, bring me here, which is 6.0. Right? So, definitely the last one, that will be the range. Let's assume it is 6.0. So, volume of the acid used you get this number, you deduct this number here. So this will be 6.1, this will be 6.0, this will be 6.0. See the volume of acid used to neutralize the 25 cubic centimeter of the base, which was the sodium hydroxide. So we, that is so about what we're supposed to, to do. The question we have there, calculate, question number one, calculate the average volume of acid that neutralized the base. So how do we tackle this bit, this question? Uh, let's do some space here. So let's do a solution for part A that calculate the average volume of acid that neutralized. So what you do, you add the three values, which was 6.1 plus 6.0 plus 6.0, you divide by the three entries or the three triangles. So this will be 18.1 divided by 3, so that will be 6.001 cubic centimeter. In other words, that is 6.00 centimeter cubic. That is the average volume of the acid that neutralized the base. So the answer is 6.01 centimeter cubic. Question number two, write the equation between solution Q and solution P. The solution Q, that was sulfuric acid. Solution P, that was the sodium hydroxide. So we need to write that equation, well-balanced equation. Sulfuric acid appears, you react with sodium hydroxide, appears, you get sodium Surface appears soluble salt and color solution, which is water. So that is the equation of part B. The equation which needs to be balanced. Sulfuric acid, when you get sodium hydroxide, you get the sodium surface and color uh, solution, which is water. Let's balance the equation. The number of hydrogen in the reactant side, we have two. Here we have two. Sulfur, we have one. We have one sulfur. Oxygen we have 4 plus 1, that is 5 in the reactant side. Product side we have 4 plus 1, 5. Sodium we have 1 here, we have 2. So we have to put 2 here. Sorry, 2 there. So we have 2 sodium, we have 2 sodium as well. Now you find the oxygen has been affected. So number of oxygen we have to go back because here, this is two oxygen plus four that is six so this is four we can add two there meaning that the hydrogen two now and also that balance hydrogen will be that is four 
have two here, and we have two here. The equation is balanced. It's balanced. We have sulfuric acid, we have two sulfuric uh, acid and So that equation, the way it is, it is balanced. You have two hydrogen plus two here, that is four. The product side we have two times two, that is four. Sulfur we have one, we have one sulfur oxide, we have four plus two, six. That is oxygen, right? This is two plus two, that is six as well. Sodium we have two, sodium we have two. Hydrogen we have balanced. Equation is balanced. So write the equation for the question number part two, sorted. Question number three, calculate the number of moles of acid that neutralizes the base. The number of moles of acid that neutralizes the base. So the first thing we know the volume which was used, all right? We, the average volume of the acid which you the base was 6.0. What we have provided with was solution Q was 0.5 molar. Alright? When you talk of a solution which is in a molar solution, it's a solution which has made, made up to 1 liter. That is 1,000 cubic centimeters. That's what now we call a solution which is uh, a molar solution. A molar solution is a solution which has been made up to 1,000 cubic So what you do here, you say for question part C, 0.5 molar, which you have there, was made in a thousand cubic centimeter. Then now you have this question here: 6.001 centimeter cubic will give us a number of moles. Then you cross multiply. This will be 0.5 molar molar by six divided by one thousand. Maurice, do that one for me. You have a calculator, right? 0 0.5 molar by 6, that is 30, 30 minus one point, so that is like 3. 3 divided by 1000, and that will give you 0 0.003 moles. 0 0.0033 moles. Part D, calculate the number of moles of the base number of moles of the base. So in this case what you do, you use the ratios of how the acid has reacted with the base, you use the ratios. And our equation was here, you can come with me slowly. We add the acid and the base, and you can find that when you balance the equation, acid we did not add any, so the, the ratios of a reactant is between acid plus base, the ratios are one, these two, these two here. All right. Already we have the number of moles of the acid, which we have said is 0.003 moles. So you post note this question for the acid to be what? Then you cross multiply. This will be 0.003 multiplied by 2 divided by 1. And this will give you 0.006 moles. 0 0.006 moles. The first last question, find the molarity of sodium hydroxide. Find the molarity of sodium hydroxide. The molarity, as I said, is a solution which has been made up to 1,000 cubic centimeters or rather 1 liter. So you come here, you say, uh, this moles we have got here for the base, students, which is 0 0.006 moles, these are the moles of the base which we pipetted here. And what we pipetted here was 25 cubic centimeters exactly. That's what we need. So the moles we have gotten here are only in 25 cubic centimeters. So to get the molarity, this solution should be in a thousand. So to post that question, a thousand cubic centimeter will give us which number of moles. Then you cross multiply students. Then this will be 0. 0.0. 06. Uh, calculate this one for me. Uh, multiply by 1000 divided by 25. Right? By 25, 1 by 25, that is 40. Right? That's true. Right. 40. So it will be 0 0.006 multiplied by 40 by 40. 4 minus 6, that is 24. 
four, you have this zero there. Then how many decimal points? One, two, three. One, two, three. So the molarity of the base of the base of this is zero point two four. Molarity is 